Hey there! I am so excited about this project. So let's get right into it. This project has many aspects to it, from building the base and torching it, to soldering copper tubes and wires. And I want to thank my friends at Burnsomatic for sponsoring this project and helping me bring this crazy idea to life. The first step is to build a hexagon base. So I set my saw to a 30 degree bevel and made the cuts. I used a one by three and cut it in about seven inch long pieces. I should have probably used a stop block, but this worked as well. I sanded them and laid them out with the short side down and added masking tape to the backs. Then I turned it over and added glue to all the joints. I folded it up to make the hexagon. And then I also added a couple of brad nails to hold it all together and then I let it dry overnight. The next day I traced and cut out a hexagon top from a 1x10 and I attached it using wood glue and finished nails. Now I needed to make holes for the copper pipes, so I drew the center line and marked where the copper pipes would go. I made a few pilot holes and then I used my one inch parsnip bit to make all the holes. I quickly double checked to make sure that the pipe adapters fit and then I took it outside to torch it with my BZ4500 torch using burnsomatic propane. I really loved the nice charred look that I got with a few passes. I lightly sanded and wiped the entire thing up and then sealed it with clear spray sealer. Now while the spray sealer was drying, I started cutting my copper pipes using a pipe cutter. I have a list of all the materials and tools I used in the description below. I went into this without a concrete idea of what I wanted the structure to look like. I knew I wanted a few random shaped pipes sticking out, so I just cut up a few different sizes of copper pipe. I also got a few styles of elbows and T-joints and then I just spent some time playing with the shapes and the fittings till I was happy with the final styles. It was time to solder the pipes. I used a soldering kit, a wire brush, sandpaper, and the BZ4500 with burnsomatic propane. I have braised aluminum before and this was very similar. The first step was to clean and roughen up the surfaces that are going to be joined together. So sandpaper for the exterior of the tubes and a wire brush for the insides. I used a bench vise to hold it in place and applied flux to the joining surfaces. I heated up the copper till it was hot enough that the solder melted on contact. Which actually did not take very long at all and I was pleasantly surprised at how fast and clean the joint was. I realized that I ended up having to wait for the copper to cool down before I was able to make the next joint. So instead of making each joint one by one, I decided to just assemble the entire structure and then start soldering. So I just cleaned, applied flux, and assembled the entire structure on the vise. This was also a good idea because some of the joints were so close to each other that the heat from one was good enough 
for the next one as well. And this made the entire process go so much faster. The copper pipes have a lot of heat discoloration, but that can be easily cleaned up with a little buffing from a 4-0 steel wall. Now for the fun part, the wiring. I used these LED bullet lights and their wires were too short, so I soldered extra wires to make them longer. For this, I used the Burnsomatic Butane Detail Torch with the soldering tip. It heated up pretty fast and was ready to go. Then I added heat shrink tube to each of the joints so that they wouldn't short out with each other or with the copper pipes. The burns of adding detail torch can also work as a heat gun. So just remove the tip and then use it. Now with all the three LEDs ready, it was time to thread them through the pipes. The first two were actually smooth enough to pass through, but the most complicated shape gave me a lot of trouble. In fact, I finally decided that adding the extra wire from the bottom was so much easier and then I could just solder the LED at the top. So I cut it out all up and then redid the entire connection. If I were to make this again, I would probably do this for all the structures because it was just so much easier to thread the wire through and then get everything in place. Remember, I have a link to all of these materials in the description below. The LED lights come with a rubber grip at the top, which I just removed to fit the entire LED inside the pipe. Then I added the adapters to the wood base. Now I wasn't very careful with the wrench, so I did end up scratching the wood a little bit. So definitely be careful about that if you make this project. Then I put the copper pipes with LEDs into the base. I decided not to attach these because they can just stay put because of gravity, but can also easily be rotated around to change up the orientation. For the external connection, I'm using an adapter with a connector that has a screw adapter. So this can just go through the walls in the back. I drilled a hole with a bit that was about the same size as the adapter and then I just stuck it in. I was expecting that I would need to use an adhesive to keep it in place, but the fit was so tight that it was needed. Next, to add the switch, I made a 3 quarter inch hole with a forcer bit. I added the switch, which was a little tight to push in. And I finally ended up using my mallet to pound it in. I am not sure if it was a good idea, but it worked and the switch works, so we're all good. Now for the final connections, I connected all the positive wires and then connected them to one of the wires from the terminal of the switch. Now, I had not paid enough attention when I was connecting the wires, so I did end up switching the colors on one of the LEDs. So I had to be very careful to mark and remember which one was which. I collected all the negatives of the LEDs and soldered them together along with an extra wire to extend it out to the adapter. So finally, I added a heat shrink to all these connections. And then I connected the negative of the switch to the positive of the screw connector. And I connected the negative of the LEDs to the negative of the screw connector.
And then I turned it on. And it works. To close the bottom, I had cut a hexagon out of a 1x10 to fit the inside dimension of the hexagon base. I just pushed it in and it was snug enough that I did not need any nails or glue. Now for the acrylic rod. I measured approximately how large I wanted each rod to be, which was about 5 to 6 inches. So I measured and cut them out using a miter box and hand saw. Now here's the deal. You can only find transparent acrylic rods. But when you put it in and turn on the light, because it is transparent, the light just passes out of the tube. You really want to have the sides frosted so that the light can bounce around in the inside and you get a nice glow. So here's an easy technique I found to frost the acrylic rods. I used a 400 grit sandpaper and held the rods under water and started sanding them. It is important to sand in the same direction and around the rod evenly. Now this is done underwater because water is washing away all the particles generated from the sanding so that you don't get any secondary scratches from them. It took a couple of minutes and you can start to see that the rod is starting to get translucent. But the real difference is visible when you wipe it dry. Now look at the difference when I put it in. To keep the rods in place, I added a little dab of hot glue and then pushed them in. There it is, my crazy little copper pipe and acrylic rod LED lamp. I had so much fun building this project that I might now be hooked onto LED projects. So keep an eye out for that and don't forget to hit subscribe. Now here are a few fun videos that I have done in the past that you might enjoy.